So a few months ago, I received some seeds from my E30, but I have yet to put them in, and they didn't always look like this. Now, because these are some random aftermarket seats, they really weren't gonna fit in the E30, and I had to figure out how to fit them in there. At first, these seats were black. They weren't looking anything like this. The actual design of the seats themselves were a lot different, but I went ahead and got them reupholstered with the rest of the car when I got the dash done, the door cards, and the rear seats. As you can see, this was my attempt at making my own custom seat bracket. It was supposed to fit across the front and the rear portions where you bolt into the car, but I really didn't take into account this new vent that I went, I put in. Without this vent, it could fit and it could work, but it, it just wouldn't have looked as good. And um, it was honestly taking me some time since I never really did custom fabrication. And as you can see, it's pretty damn ugly, but it would have worked. As you can see, the bolt lines up on that side and on this side. So. So I spent a few hours custom making that bracket. I noticed it really didn't fit anymore. Now the major issue I ran into with these new seats is that these holes fall a little bit too much to the inside. So honestly, they're a little bit too narrow to actually mount to the factory. Mount locations, that would have been super easy if it did happen to line up perfectly, but it doesn't. So now we had to figure out how to address that issue and get them into the car without looking too janky. Ignore all the mess. We got a bunch of random parts here that we're gonna be putting on in the near future. Uh, but the ones we're gonna be focusing on today are these right here um, And these things came in super clutch. They're a little bit pricey But honestly now that I have them, I think they're super worth it You can put almost any seat into the E30 with these two pieces right here So as you can see there's a number of holes on the actual bracket itself And the cool thing about it is that if you're a taller person you're above 6'1 You can actually mount the seat bracket farther back so that you have more adjustability and you're a little bit farther from the steering wheel. But if you're six feet and under, you can mount to option number one, which is for regular heighted people. And you don't need all that space between yourself, the seat and the steering wheel. I'm not sure if this is the inside and if this is the outside, but one of them go like this or like this and your seat should mount right up to this. So you have these two pieces right here and Garagistic is actually really nice and thoughtful. They actually send out a set of brackets for your seat buckle. Uh, so this you can actually mount it to the bracket itself or to the seat whatever you think is best And since we have two seats that we need to install one is actually sitting right there We actually have another set of brackets that we have for the other side and That's still in the packaging So we'll have it set for both sides and we'll install both seats today and see them in the car finally So my guess is that since this side has a little bit more space this one goes on this side And then this one falls to this side, like that. The carpet just needs to get pushed down a little bit. So let's go ahead and bolt these down, get them in place. So I've taken the seat in and out a few times and I'm just trying to adjust the proper placement of the seat. I don't want it sitting too far back too far forward so I bolted it down on this location first that's option number one so I unbolted everything and now I'm gonna move the entire bracket system back um, that way the seat sits appropriately uh, before this not enough bolts were shown in the rear and then too many were shown in the front so I couldn't bolt down the actual seal seat belt buckle back here and I also need a location to mount the actual seat belt to the back here as well so this will give me more options in the rear rather than the front and I'll bolt it all down again. And the seat basically is gonna sit right in the second row on both sides. So that's how I'm kind of measuring it. And um, hopefully this time, once it goes in, um, I know exactly where it's gonna sit and then I can just copy that exact same setup on the driver's side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start bolting this down, put the seat down and see how it looks. And now because of these rails, we got the seat in and this is how it's sitting so far. It's moved all the way up right now, but we'll move it back later. I just need to get some more hardware like this, which is the hardware that goes into the actual uh, universal mount itself. So we have the seat belt buckle in kind of temporary place. It's gonna sit something like that once it's finally bolted in. Uh, but obviously the, when the seat moves back, you'll see it a little bit more. So then the seatbelt will get mounted right there, somewhere in that location, and then this will actually get mounted to this uh, universal mount as well. So this thing is gonna be holding everything 
So this should go something like, come on, something like that, but I'll clean it up, make it look a little bit nicer. But so far, this is how we have it. Once I get some more hardware, we'll start on the driver's side, do the exact same thing, and we should have both the seats in. So far, looking real good. Just like that side, we got the new mounting brackets in, and this time we just exped expedited the process since we know exactly how that seat was sitting. So now we're just gonna go ahead and start mounting up the actual seat itself. We gotta make sure to plug in our seat belt harness uh, to the buckle, and from there we're gonna do the exact same thing with the actual seat belt and bolt it down just like that around somewhere one of these last few holes, right? Not the best way, uh, but this way, at least we have a seat belt compared to not running it at all. But as you guys can see, this mounting system is super nice. Um, if it wasn't for this, I would have had to get an E30 specific one, but there's nothing to say that the seat will actually fit. I know Braum, Sparkle and them make um, mounting brackets for seats, but there's nothing to say that these aftermarket seats are gonna fit on those brackets. So. These universal ones are amazing and they're made for the E30. So they bolt right into the E30 and then they go universally to most seats. Super nice to have. Again, shout out to Gurajistic for this. We got a bunch more parts sitting inside that we need to install. But this is the first step into getting this car drivable again. like that we got our seat in it's looking so good right now actually I'm super excited this seat did give me a lot more problems it seemed like the sliding mechanism on this seat was a little bit different than the one on there so it was actually a little bit wider than that passenger seat and it didn't really fit on the mount I really had to convince the bracket to sit where it's supposed to be sitting or sit it at the widest width of the mount so it's not really too happy right now it does take a little bit of pressure to move it back and forth but that's completely fine um, the farthest it can go back is right where I'm gonna be driving so fully extended out my knee is almost straight and my arm is almost fully extended to get to the top of the steering wheel if I'm leaning all the way back but we got the seat sitting at a very comfortable position for driving on a daily basis we're not too far back we're not too far forward so overall very happy with it it did take some time but I'm glad I took the time to set it up properly so that everything works we can adjust it if needed for any of my friends who might be a little bit shorter you guys can pull the seat up if you want to drive the car for anyone taller than me, you guys can push the seat back a little bit farther. Not too far back, but a little bit farther. So, luckily we have that customizability. So, a lot of the good news is we might be receiving our door panels and our center console pretty soon. They're on the way here. So, hopefully in the next few days we have that in and we can complete out the rest of this interior. But, honestly, huge shout out to Garagistic again. Without these seat mounts, I really don't think I would have got these seats in. I don't have enough experience fabricating or... Uh, making metal parts for me to be able to do this. I thought I could, but I don't think I could have now that I ran into all the issues that I did. But as you guys can see, the wheel, the, the seats fit into the car perfectly. There's like a tiny gap between where the seat belt sits and the seat itself. So really tight fit overall, but there's a lot of space in the center console area. And I shifted the seat a little bit slanted because that center console does protrude out a little bit on that side. So that way the seat doesn't hit that as you're sliding backward and forward. But overall, the seats are looking amazing and super excited to finish this out. And I'm gonna show you guys some of the other parts that we have coming up in the next few videos because I think you guys are gonna like that. Hopefully in the next video, if the rest of the parts come in, we'll be throwing in our brand new BMW floor mats. These are original BMW floor mats from the dealership themselves. Hopefully it fits, I'm not sure. I think this is made for an E36 but we'll go ahead and try it out, see if it fits. We have our new steering wheel from Renown right here. I'm not gonna show you guys how this looks just yet, but yeah, we have that in. 
we have our hub adapter for the steering wheel. We have some other parts from Garagistic right here. We have our new short shifter. This is also gonna go in. And then we have the rest of the short shifter, which is a bottom mount, which is sitting right here. We also have a new DSSR. This connects to the short shifter and then trans mounts and a new e-brake button. So got a lot of stuff. This is also for the short shifter. This is a factory piece that you need to replace when putting in the short shifter. But that also needs to go on. And then in this box, I have some miscellaneous screws and nuts and stuff like that. An example of what those screws consist of. We have different screws that hold the lower kick panel in place. We also have the different plastic rivets that hold this. Um, B pillar or whatever this pillar plastic in place as well we also have door sills on the way uh, when I got this car it never had door sills so as you can see whoever the previous owner was broke a lot of them or broke most of them uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get these out get the new ones in um, and then from there we're pretty much good to go the interior is gonna be done on this car and uh, honestly again super excited because after so long, we're finally putting everything back together. It's taking a lot longer to put everything back together, but that's just how the process is. Nothing really goes, goes as planned. So. so if you haven't already, go down and subscribe. Let me know what you think about the E30. So far, it is coming along together pretty well in my eyes, at least. So uh, again, stay tuned, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.